good evening, folks. I'm Zach Cassagoon from the Grimdark Compendium, and tonight I would love to continue our discussion about Vilni Ink Enamels by giving you a closer look and a few demonstrations on Goon's Grime. It's the most essential color in the range, which I'm sure, due to its properties, will be heavily utilized in the Grimdark style of miniature painting. Before we get started, I would like to discuss a little bit why a grime color is so important for the grimdark style. I can assure you that the purpose of a grime color is multifaceted indeed. Its use goes beyond just the effect of muck and dirt. It signifies something much deeper, as the hue and the temperature it brings to a miniature can completely change the atmosphere of your work and set up a mood that is befitting the horridly grim nature of the miniature circumstance. Now, when I say circumstance, I am simply alluding to the nature of the dark or dystopian physical and psychological environments that we grimdark painters often embrace as our setting. These worlds that we create in are spiteful, utterly cruel, desolate, and full of terrors, and the gravity of this fact can be seen in every single environment and on the face of every soldier, man, woman, and child. Now, an idea like this certainly lends itself to a specific aesthetic, and with the proper paints and techniques, we can better achieve this specific aesthetic in our miniature art. So, how can we use Goon's Grime to render the Grimdark style? Well, there are multiple techniques that we can use, the simplest and perhaps the most common being the unifying wash when paired, of course, with the reductive technique. While this application of grime can be achieved with a brush, I do highly recommend using an airbrush to apply a smooth, nearly opaque layer of goon's grime over the entire miniature. Let that dry or blow dry it, and then begin to carefully remove the wash with a Q-tip and mineral or white spirits. Now, this removal step should be handled in multiple passes. The first removal pass will leave your miniature looking a tad flat in most cases. This flat or bland look is due to the nature of the reductive technique and how it works. When utilizing this technique, the base colors that we are removing the grime from are treated as the highlight. So, subsequent removal passes will result in higher contrast between the shading that the grime creates and the highlights that we are revealing. The unifying wash is useful on practically any surface you want to quickly add value to. It works just as well over hard surfaces such as space marine armor as it does over organic surfaces like monster or alien flesh. The result of a well-rendered unifying wash is highly satisfying. It boasts an astonishingly high degree of subtle gradients, deep blends, and its color and temperature immediately set that mood that is perfect for the grimdark style. The unifying wash and reductive technique are techniques that I highly recommend getting accustomed to if you are new to enamels or oils, if you are unsure what exactly the reductive technique is, then rest assured because we have a video coming out very soon that will discuss this matter in great depth and tell you everything you need to know about the techniques. Another way that we can use Goon's Grime is in the process of filtering. For example, let's take a look at a white armored surface that has already been slightly distressed. It has a pin wash and a slight green filter, but we want to create another gradient or filter down at the bottom of this panel. So the absolute best practice here is to apply the grime with an airbrush. Of course, you can use a brush, but with an airbrush it's going to be much easier to control the amount and strength of the filter. So I will apply the filter as smoothly as possible, give it a quick blow dry, and then begin to remove it with either a dry or slightly dampened q-tip or brush. A technique like this is perfect for forcing shadow, forcing contrast, or just creating an area with interesting modeling. After this we can either leave it as a simple filter or go on to add various amounts of details by using something like the soft pressing technique 
or adding streak effects. And here is a look at the same technique rendered with a brush. Filtering effects are useful in various applications and in several areas of miniature painting. We can use it to filter skin tones, create dingy spots on cloth, filter armor plates, create grimy spots on metal, etc. The best thing about using an enamel is the level of control it offers. If we mess up, we can all together remove it and try again or just blend it down to a minimum level and readjust it. Enamels are really great like that. They're beginner friendly, very forgiving, and easy to learn. And in my opinion, are the absolute best types of washes to use as they offer the most control and can be considered semi-permanent remaining workable for much longer than acrylic washes or speed paints. Finally, I'll mention streaking effects, a technique that can be utilized on practically any surface like metal, armor panels, flesh, and even cloth given the right circumstances. So it's pretty straightforward. Just roughly add a vertical line of goons grime. This line doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be as straight as you can get it, but it really doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be making it perfect during the removal and cleanup process. After adding the line, come in with a clean, dry brush and work at the edges of the line. This will help you to create that thin, perfectly straight streak. You can then clean between any streaks with a brush slightly dampened with mineral spirits. This may make your streak over pronounced. To fix this, we'll just simply hit the area with a blow dryer to ensure the mineral spirits has been flashed off and then come in with a clean dry brush and work back over the streaks and this will lower the opacity. All right guys, so that is gonna be it for our Goons Grime demonstration. If you want to see more in-depth guides on the practical use of this product in many different scenarios, please visit the Grimdark Compendium website. We use enamels in almost every single tutorial and course on the site. So there are hundreds of examples for you to look at there. Shortly, I will add a page specifically for Goons Grime that will be loaded with resources and how-tos so you can master the use of grime effects and enamel applications. So make sure to be on the lookout for that. I appreciate you guys for joining me this evening. And before I go, I want to extend my gratitude for all of the support our Villainy Eek launch has gotten. Thank you so much for that. It really has been amazing. Also, make sure to stay tuned as I will have some big announcements to make regarding international distributors and the partnerships that we're working on so that our product can be easily obtained globally. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next.